I read about an exhibit that was in an English museum. It was one of those interactive exhibits. They put out a Bible and opened it up and put some pens and pencils next to it and invited people to write whatever comments they wanted on the words on the pages of the Bible. And you can imagine there were some very negative things that were written on those pages. Very vehement, very angry, um, against God, against God's Word. It was, uh, I won't go into details, but it was uh, not pleasant reading when I read those comments. And yet, you and I were called to read God's Word. God's Word is so powerful. I want to recognize how God sometimes organizes things. So earlier this week, as I was preparing this message and praying, I felt moved to talk about the Bible. Uh, Unbeknownst to him, Butch Hedgepath sent me a, a link to a podcast by Francis Chan on the Bible and the Sacrament of Holy Communion. And I listened to about half of the podcast, and then I ran out of time, had something else to do. But it resonated with me and moved me deeply as he spoke so powerfully and eloquently about God's Word. And then in today's Anglicanism class, the chapter they were studying was on the Bible. (laughs) So it's interesting how God brought it all together this week. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus uh, delivered and healed this man who was mute. And then, of course, he was accused, accused of being a devil himself, and that's why he was able to deliver this man. But Jesus taught them the truth, and he ended today's passage with this. Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God And keep it. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. There's three things in there I want to point out. Number one, that we are blessed when we read God's word. And I could go into details about that. uh, But just know this, as you read it, God moves in your life and you are blessed. Hear the word of God. Now, obviously, he's talking about hearing it being read. In those days, uh, the scriptures were read out loud in the synagogues and meeting places because not everyone had copies of the scriptures like we do today. So hearing the word of God can also mean reading the word of God. And if you're an audio person, you can hear the word of God read to you. And then finally, and keep it, and other translations say, and obey it. Those three things work together to bring about God's purposes and plans for our lives. That is how powerful God's Word is. This is not just a book. As I told the children, it is God's Word. Now here's your quiz. What did we learn from the story of Noah this morning? I'm just kidding. All right. But just that little story, we we glean those nuggets I shared with the children this morning. That's just one example of how God's Word can speak to us, even in these wonderful stories. But if we read... The epistle again this morning, if you go home and read today's epistle, you'll be struck by how powerful that is in God saying, these are things that are not supposed to be part of your life. These are sinful behaviors that should not be part of a person who calls himself a Christian. And and that's a powerful thing that the Word of God does in our life. It's one of the things it says. 
2 Timothy 3, all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So much is in there, I don't have time to go into it, but the Word of God touches our lives if we, if we spend time with it. It teaches us, it rebukes us, it corrects us, it trains us if we spend time with it. And then Hebrews 4, 12 and 13, For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. That verse is particularly appropriate for the season of Lent, is it not? Where we focus on repentance and examining our lives so that the sin that is within us and that we are doing, God can speak to us and help us to say no to that and move into a more righteous kind of life, a life of love, as Paul so eloquently put it in today's reading. The thoughts and attitudes of the heart. What a great phrase. As we read the Word of God and allow it to speak to us, it gets us all the way in, as deep as it possibly can go, into our very the center of our very being. Some of us don't want it to go there. And so I think that's one of the reasons we don't read it. We're afraid of what it might say to us and how it might touch us. But that's why we need to read it. God doesn't point these things out in our lives because He's mad at us He does it so that we can turn away from those things, so that our lives can be more victorious in Jesus Christ, so that our life is more Christ-like. That's why He does it. And then the last scripture I want to share with you, Psalm 119.11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. There's the power of God's Word. When you take it in and you really make it your own, it helps you keep you from sinning in the first place. It stops you even before you begin because the Word of God is active and moving in your life and in your heart. That's how powerful it is. So as I encourage the children, I want to encourage you Start reading God's Word. Some of you are reading it already, of course, I know that. Some of you may need to get started or read more. The uh, daily bread that we put out is a good uh, starting place. It has scriptures listed at the bottom of each devotion that you can read. Uh, Obviously, those are a few verses. You can read more. Uh, You can get a Bible reading plan. I actually have a Bible, it's called the One Year Bible. And it has day one, you read this. Day two, you read this. Day 365, you're done. It's a a great way to read through the Bible. Now, granted, when you get to Leviticus and whatnot, you may slow down a bit. (laughs) Numbers is, is a bit difficult to get through with all those genealogies. But I want to encourage you to read God's Word more and more. Allow it to speak to you. I want to end with one of our great colleagues from our prayer book. Turn with me to page 92 in your prayer book. I know we're in Lent, but I'm going back to Advent for this particular collect. Page 92. the colic for the second Sunday in Advent. Let us pray this together. 
Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life which Thou hast given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our offertory sentence today comes from the book of Deuteronomy. Ye shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given unto thee. 